Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today, uh, we're back on uh, Dave and Sue Minas, and uh, we have uh, a beaver. This is where the beaver's got that dammed up a little bit down there. There's beaver that goes up around this bend here. Anyway, we brought the cow-calf mob down in here, and uh, the boys just caught a baby calf out there. That's a day old. We usually try and do it after a day old. You hear him squall when they grabbed him. Uh, well, that didn't take long. My goodness. I just heard him squall and they're done. Got the tag in. We always spray a little bit of iodine on the plunger that <clears throat> when you punch it through the ear just to kind of help. Uh, you know, any type of infection that might try and set in there or whatever. We seem to have pretty good luck with that and we are using the miniature tags the small calf tags not the great big ones um, that seems to help a lot too um, but this is a bottom that we graze with the bulls oh gosh it's been well, probably close to three weeks ago and uh, so we tried to time our arrival in here during the week because uh, Dave likes to turkey hunt and um, so we, we came in here, this is Tuesday morning, and you know, he'll be hunting possibly this weekend down here, or he may not, I don't know, but try and stay out of the way for the turkeys. Because, uh, yeah, I'm that way too. I kind of like turkey hunting, and it's nice just to get out and be at one with nature sometimes. This is where the sand came out of the creek. Uh, last year we had that big flood, this whole bottom was underwater probably about I don't know eight inches to a foot and it it actually left a lot of sand deposit along the creek bank so we've got a little uh, brush removal project on the far end of this field up here and uh, I'm gonna try and just put some get the sand thinner uh, or have a high lift where he can just scoop it up put it back in the creek where it belongs kind of reclaim it did it for about a hundred yards up through here and the, this is so deep that the forage can't come up through it so hope to fix that we don't really want a sandbox right out here in the middle of our field or at the edge of the field I might say it's a pretty sight it's like Isaac said a while ago it's a nice warm morning got a little breeze uh, we got a, a major rain front coming at us uh, tomorrow and Thursday. They're talking in our area possibly two to three inches. Over by St. Louis areas, they showed six inches. We don't want the six inches. Um, that's, that's too much rain for the ground around here to hold this clay. You'll get about maybe an inch and a half, two inches that soaked up. And the rest is going to be, you might have some more of that sand come out. <laughs> You know, we will take what Mother Nature gives us. Um, we don't have any choice in that matter, but kind of hoping for the, the, the two inch level. But you can see this cow here, she's almost, I don't know, she's 60, 70, 80% slicked off. It got up to 88 degrees yesterday. I think they're calling for the same temperatures today. You get up to that 88, and I'm telling you, uh, your problems with a winter hair coat are going to be gone pretty quick. Uh, you can't even tell which cows now had the, the lice patches on them. There's a few cows that had some bare spots from the lice chewing on them. Uh, late winter and with this hot sun, it's done. Lice are gone and now the, the beautiful summer hair coat's filling in. And We didn't have to go out and spend a ton of money and kill all of our soil biology by pouring stuff all over their back. And Anytime you pour any kind of chemical on the back of the cow, it ends up in the soil. And you put a crutch. You put a crutch under your cattle. And there's people that have commented that, you know, if you culled those animals that got lice, in a few years, you know, you just have a whole herd that would be resistant to, to lice. And they, they're, they're probably right. Um, but, you know, we, we only have maybe 10% of the cows that, that get it. And to me, you know, just let nature take care of it. And she does every year. 
and the cattle do fine. It's just they, they look kind of rough for about 30 days there in late winter. But look at look at this farm. Uh, when I leased this from uh, Dave and Sue, it was all fescue. It was just a thatch. There wasn't any animals on it. Didn't have any fence on it. No water. And uh, I went together with Dave and Sue and built a pond up here on the hill. And uh, this one tank, that blue tank over there, feeds this whole farm. And uh, they have 80 acres, but I think we're on about 40 over here across the creek. It's just a beautiful area. I love coming onto their farm because we have such a beautiful stand of clover. There's orchard grass. Uh, I saw some brome. I just walked by some brome over there. Uh, the brome probably came in with the hay we unrolled. Because there wasn't any brome in here, I can promise you that. It was just a, a thatch. A thatch of mature fescue and probably 20 years of duff. It's just duff buildup. And uh, with ruminant animals, unrolling hay in here, and uh, rotating, you know, we're just going to leave them here for, well, we put them in here uh, about 8.45 this morning, and they'll come out of here around 5 o'clock tonight, 4.30, 5 o'clock. And they'll go into the next paddock. And so we're constantly, we got a lot of animals now. There's uh, 400... Let's see, there's 440 head in here, and uh, that's minus, let's see, let me back up on that. We've got, uh, we got 64 bulls in another herd, so it'd be 440 minus, 440 minus 64, <laughs> do the math. Um, there's a bunch of them, and there's, a, and there's t tons of baby calves being born every day, so when the cows calve, their uh, dietary uh, requirements double, okay? So if they're eating whatever it was they're eating, just calculate it out, they're gonna need twice as much grass to get that, to keep that calf going. And if you uh, restrict the intake of the cow with the new baby calf, you're gonna have health issues. You're gonna have health issues, not only possibly with the cow and the calf. I mean, the cow's gonna get thin, she's not gonna rebreed. And the calf's going to have possibly pink eye, pneumonia, you know, you name it. Look at that little calf. Oh, she's just a beaut. I love watching them play. Um, there's our pet cow. <laughs> I don't know why she's a pet, because we never... She's just a pet, 864. She's always been just a pet. And we were just, you know, hoping that she'd make a good mama, and, and she is. She's she's awesome mama. Aren't you 864? Yeah. Yeah. Get your head scratched this morning. I love my cows, but, you know, you can't fall in love with them to the fact that if they don't perform, you got to get rid of them. And so if 864, for whatever reason, doesn't do her job, you know, you, you have to get rid of her and make a place on your farm for one that will do what you want them to do that means giving you a calf every year they're docile they're not goofy there's one of the steers we put in there's 20 22 head of steers that we dumped into the herd um, when the mob moved on to this what we call docks farm and now we're on the end of docks actually in the meanest uh, dave and sue so yeah it's it's a beautiful beautiful time of year I love it because, you know, the cows are getting everything they need from the grass. We don't have to worry about unrolling a bale of hay. We're just giving them mineral and uh, an update. I'm going to head back over to the boys. They're the ones that uh, been moving the mineral, and they, they've got a report to make uh, you know, on, the, on the free choice mineral. And the uh, right now we're, the experiment we are on is sea salt with uh, apple cider vinegar in it. So we're putting a 50 pound bag of sea salt mixed with a cattle mineral, a two to one ratio. So I'm gonna have the boys explain that a little bit. And uh, black cow shed, look at that. Coming off her, coming off her run in. So what, what have y'all noticed about the mineral when we, we switched to doing the the vinegar, like that cow's rubbing on it over there right now. 
That's not a feed bunk, folks. That's where we got our apple cider vinegar and the sea salt. But what have you all noticed? They're definitely preferentially eating that. Um, and it's probably a factor of the apple cider vinegar being an attractant. But that's not the only reason it's in there. There's some other benefits to it, like making them more, making their body more alkaline, which is kind of counterintuitive because it's an acid, and helping with um, feed efficiency and just good health in general. Yep. But it tastes good to them, and they've developed a taste for it, so they're consuming that mineral over the free choice. But ah. it's not necessarily because of the sea salt or the well, we don't know because of the sea salt or the specific mineral. We're, we're theorizing it's more just the apple cider vinegar. That's, that's causing it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting to try just feeding sea salt dry, you know, putting it out there like the, the free choice and just uh -huh. seeing which one they, they go to. Without the vinegar in there. Vinegar yeah. In it. yeah. Just because the vinegar, like you said, they developed, they developed the taste for it and they like that, that sour taste. So you want to go in and explain a little bit more about that sea salt. We're actually mixing it with what? With, so it's a uh, hundred pound, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hundred pounds of sea salt to 50 pounds of a mineral mix that you've been getting up as a chili coffee. Yes. Um, it's pre-made. Um, it's got however many minerals, like different, like 20 or something. Yep. More. And then it's got, of course, vitamin A and B yeah. in it. And so then that's getting mixed up dry. And then we take whatever, probably 50 pounds of that, of that mixture, two to one, put it in here in the trough. And then we mix the apple cider vinegar about four gallons to a hundred pounds, roughly. Although we've reduced that significantly. Yeah, because the, the cows, tanking up on it. I mean, we filled that yesterday and there's no vinegar in it. So yeah. we've been giving them just like maybe a gallon or two gallons at a time. Yep. Just to kind of ration them out a little bit. Well, people are asking us where we got the vinegar from and the actual source, uh, I think you can go to probably Steve Campbell's website. I think he has it on there. It comes out of Idaho. I don't know the actual name of the vinegar company. Golden Valley. It was it? I think it's Golden it's, Valley. It's like golden. It's either golden apple or gold. But it's Steve. Like you're right. The Steve Campbell thing. Yeah. He, it should be he. He sort of distributes it, or I don't know what his role is with it. Right. Um, it, I guess. Yeah. But it comes in a tote. Uh, was there 275 gallons in there? Or 250. It was like one of those whatever. The square, yeah. The square plastic. Did it? What's the name of those things? It's, it's a uh, tote. I, I, tote. Yeah. It's, like yeah it's got a. Is it reinforced? Does it have the metal? Yeah. Yeah. It has the yeah. Metal. Around the edge, around the yeah. Edge. yeah. Like, what do you would buy giant quantities of like food safe liquid in? You yep. know what I mean? Or yeah. some sort of puree or something like that. And it's got a big old spigot. It comes out fast, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right, right now, so all the good stuff settled to the bottom, and we're still working through that good, probably about a foot, foot deep sediment of yeah. sediment at the bottom. So yeah. That's the cattle are getting. Which is, yeah. Yeah. It's the whole apple, the whole apple vinegar ground so, up. Yeah. It's supposed to be good stuff um, and it's like or, organic like yep. not certified but it's still you know organic practices if you want to call it that um, interesting I don't know yeah I'd like to do a comparison of dry to dry just because like yeah the vinegar yep. yeah the vinegars are attractive and they're definitely attractive to it now. right <laughs> and that's well, a good, good thing because right. we're trying to load them up yep. on a lot of mineral and so yep. the vinegar is just increasing their salt and their mineral consumption than it otherwise would, in theory. Um, Maybe once we get done calving and, and everything kind of slows down, we'll be able to do it this summer. Yeah, but yeah. Well, I'm, I'm surprised yeah. How, how quickly they just backed off the free choice because we've been getting good consumption until we offered that other, and now they're not hardly even touching I don't think it. we've filled it since we started calving. Like, no. It's been yeah. a month at least. Yeah. yeah. Free, free and before, you know, we were adding this and that about every other day. Yeah, every couple days we yeah. had a bag or two. Yeah. And they still like, they're still sort of interested in it, but you can tell not only with the consumption, but when you see like the amount that's stopped around that. Oh man, it's tore up. Yeah. Is, 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 is hugely different. So they're yeah. spending a lot more time around that than they are this. Yeah. But we well, the, the Redmonds too, if we could do like Redmonds, the Kansas yep. salt mix, and then the free choice salt mix. We almost have to get another tub. Yeah. Yeah. Like that one. Yeah, another trough. Oh, the uh, the three compartment yeah, ones. One. That's not really fair. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. There's, not enough, there's, there's not enough bunk space. True. So if you're gonna do a trial, we want to do it. You know, apples to apples. Yeah. As close as we can. Yeah, as close as we can. And if we if we're gonna pour vinegar, 
<laughs> in the seesaw, we'd have to do it in the Redmonds too. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I had somebody comment the other day on YouTube that they tried the, the garlic influence Redmonds and they had trouble with their cows on intake. Like they didn't like the yeah, smell of it. I can see that. So can we'll, see that. we'll find out. I mean, heck, they may go after it like gangbusters. I don't know. It, it would be cool though to do once once we're not as concerned about right. making sure they're heavily mineralized doing a dry to dry to dry yes and do it for a couple weeks and just keep track of yep how much we, how put, much out. we put out yeah and how much out. consumption we're getting and yeah, yeah. that'd be interesting we also kind of stopped doing the water thing too so maybe this summer it's yeah putting our tea bags back in the water yeah you notice the animals are really slicking off guys oh yeah, yeah they are like look at that cow she's almost completely slicked off yeah her back didn't hardly have any hair on it. Just a tiny bit of peach fuzz on the top. Yeah. And that's grandma right in front of her. Yeah. Grandma's slicking off on the neck and her belly. There's old crooked horns. She's yep. slicking off. Crooked horns right. slicking off. Yep. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. We've got a beautiful morning here in April. Uh, grazing school is coming up. And uh, that's going to be uh, May 6th to the 8th. We've had some people that had some uh, personal issues come up. And they're going to have to uh, cancel this time. And so we, there's a few spots uh, left open on that. If you're interested, you can go to our website at greenpasturesfarm.net. And uh, hit that subscribe button on the way out and that like button. And uh, we'll see you next time down the road. Take care.